to this channel. My name is Janet. I am the non-conformist and I'm on a journey. What is that journey that I'm on? Well, I am getting to a certain part of my life. I'm reaching middle age and I'm on a journey because I, I've come from the UK. I'm in New Zealand right now. Why am I in New Zealand? Because I am at a crossroads in my life. I'm not sure where I want to be. You know, I've gone through life very differently to the mainstream way of living. I would class that as somebody who has got married, bought a home, had children, you know, followed a career path that they started in and they've worked their way up to the top. That's, I would say, is a sort of standard way of living. Whereas my life has gone in so many different directions and I've had so many wonderful experiences in my life. And today I'm just really feeling lost. I'm feeling like I've reached this age, where do I want to be in life? And I have been to New Zealand back in 2018 and loved it. I felt like I met my tribe, you know, I met some wonderful people out here that kind of felt and lived the same values as me. So after the whole pandemic and everything, I've decided to come back and see how I feel. Do I still want to be here or would I prefer being back in the UK and living my life there? So this is where my journey is starting. This is where I've decided to make my channel to help anybody else who's out there who might be lost, who might be feeling directionless and just what do you want to do with your life? And also just some tips along the way of traveling. Mine is going to be mainly based on New Zealand, so but these tips can be used for anywhere that you travel. And maybe you're sort of in a country where you don't feel at home. Maybe you want to try a different country. You know, I've done it. I've come on my own. Here I am. So let me just describe a bit of my journey from leaving the UK to here right now and the travel, just so you can get an idea of what it's like to travel right now post pandemic. And what to bring, how to pack, you know, those types of things. I'm just going to give some of those tips today. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some footage of actually the travel. So leaving because I flew from Newcastle Airport, I went to Dubai and then I flew from Dubai to Auckland, New Zealand. And here I am. The weather is a bit wet at the moment. It's December 2022. So make sure to bring a waterproof when you come to New Zealand because it's not always going to be dry and sunny. So what did I bring on my journey? Well, of course, what we bring is a case. So this case was what I use. Really good, big case. On my flight, I flew with Emirates. So you can take 30 kilograms in a case. I'm one of those people who like to pack a lot of things. I'm not a light packer. Although I need to learn to pack a bit lighter because it's just a hassle when you're carrying so much stuff. And, you know, when you get here, you realize, did I really need all of this stuff? And I'm already finding that already i i managed to get mine down to 23 kilograms so i'm quite proud that's good for me i also brought a backpack with me this was great this i mean you just you know it was just so handy to bring this as opposed to another case because yeah you can bring a smaller case as your hand luggage but this was just perfect it's got lots of different compartments i was able to put you know a change of clothing in here because i had a long stop over in dubai 10 hours and then I could keep all my passport and documents in the front here and just anything else that I needed, such as one of these, which is great. This um, this just zips out. It's like I sat on it. It was so comfortable because the flight is 16 hours from Dubai to Auckland. It's a long flight to be sat. So this I like to sit on because I find usually it's when you're sitting for that long that you get the most pain. So, yeah, this was a huge help to me. Now, one other thing to note, what I put into here was my laptop. Now, just in case you didn't know, laptops are not allowed in your main luggage. They have to go in your hand luggage because of the lithium batteries. They are not allowed. So just remember that. That's something to note. Another great tip as well, when you are packing, is to buy something called packing cubes you can get sets of these online i got mine on amazon these ones here they were only 13 pounds 50. i got um a set of two you've got two of these with the front open so you can see exactly what's in it so i put my tops in one and i put sort of um, skirts in another then i had a bigger one which i put sort of my trousers things like that whichever you had the most of in clothing i put in the larger one then a smaller one that you can't see, I put my underwear in that one. And then we have a one for shoes, just to keep them separate. 
and also for your toiletries things to put in your toiletries now these were just ideal because you know when i got to the other end unpacking was so much easier and plus i've traveled to america before and during that flight i had a stopover and i had my case and i had to take my case through and the sniffer dogs picked up a scent on my case because I had a lot of vitamins in there so it had to be searched so it basically ended up getting opened up and the staff there just flung my clothes they were just like all over and then just flung it back to me and you know had I had them in them cubes it would have been a lot better but you know I had to end up putting it all back in zipping it all up it wasn't the best way but I mean you live and learn when you travel it's an experience in itself and you do pick up a lot of things so yeah I just found those really useful so we've checked in, we've got the baggage there. After check-in, you have to go through airport security. Now at airport security, you usually have to go through this big scanning machine. And I, for one, never want to go through them. I don't want radiation throughout my body, for one. And the second thing is, I don't want an online imprint of my entire being online, because that's where all this information goes. So I refuse to go through and having said no i won't go through they asked me why and i said for personal reasons i don't want to go through i didn't feel like i had to explain down to the finite detail because i just feel like if i had would have opened a can of worms and i just said no so what they have to do is they basically have to check you all over from top to bottom so they took me into a private room two people two women it was we went through into one room then into another then there was like a sign on the wall i had to read all of the things you know obviously you, you are willing to do da, 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 da. read it all once i read that then they carried out the search checked me all and then there was a swab they swabbed at the front of me then down below and that was it i was able to go now that i always feel is intimidating because they don't they want you to go through the scanner basically so they're making it as hard as possible for you not to so but just to know that you know, you have rights you don't have to go through them so if you like me don't want to do it then that's what you'd have to go through but really it wasn't that big of a deal you know i got through it you just have to stand there arms out they check you and then you're free to go through like everybody else so I just wanted to let you know about that part. We're on our flight. In Dubai itself, I had a stopover, as I said earlier, for 10 hours. So I stopped in what was called Sleep and Fly, which they offer like a pod, which are really small, which kind of zip up around you. They also offer um, a flexi suite, which is what I took. And I'll show some footage at the end of this so you can see exactly what it looks like. It's not very big. And to be honest, I wouldn't recommend it for a long stopover. I would say use that if you're there for like three hours or so, because then you, you know, it's not too bad. It's like, it's got a movable seat in there, but it wasn't very comfortable. And I think I got about three hours sleep in total in there. So yes, okay for short stopovers, but not long stopovers. I would recommend if you could find a hotel nearby and Emirates, apparently they offer complimentary hotels now. I was talking to a couple. I didn't know that at the time. So I have written to Emirates to see if I could, you know, get a refund or, you know, some compensation for having to pay because it was not in their small print. I didn't see that when I was booking my flight. So I'll keep you updated with that to tell you what happens when I can hear a response back for them, hopefully. Yeah, so now we're on the flight from Dubai to Auckland. It's a long flight. And when you get almost to the other side, you have to fill out one of these, which is a New Zealand passenger arrival card. Now in here, you have to fill out your um, flight details, your address, also the address of where you're traveling to, where you're gonna be staying, they need that information. They also wanna know how long you're staying for, all of these details. And then they ask you about foods, different things that you could be bringing into the country. So if you're bringing any dairy, meat products like that, they are not allowed in New Zealand. And if you don't declare them, you can be fined 400 New Zealand dollars even more i think if certain things are found in your case so yes make sure you declare anything i went to the duty free i bought some chocolate and i declared that the other side because one of the flight attendants told me somebody had an apple in their case they didn't declare it and they ended up getting fined 400 new zealand dollars for that so make sure to be careful with what you're packing in terms of foods and plants because they're not allowed in new zealand
Now another thing about New Zealand is the sunshine here. It's so hot there is no ozone layer and so you must make sure to protect your skin. So I brought some sun cream with me which is factor 50 because it is strong here and even on cloudy days those sun rays can affect you so yeah make sure to bring sun cream. Now the plugs in the UK as most will know if you're from the UK look like this but the plugs in um, New Zealand this is what they look like they're slightly curved and flat so make sure to bring an adapter so that you will not get left out when you get to your destination that you can actually use your electrics. The other thing I brought was a hairdryer. Travel hairdryers are great because they're light and this one bends so that it's a lot easier to pack. So, and it's really good to have because not all hotels have great hairdryers and I find this was really good to bring with me. Now, if you're like me and you love your home comforts, make sure to bring some of those along with you because when you come to another country, you're not going to get what you always like. And I love this tea, which is from Twinings. It's unwind, it's strawberry and chamomile, and they don't do it in New Zealand. They do a lot of chamomile teas, but not this specific one. So I brought some of these and it's been lovely just to have a nice cuppa once I arrived. And if I need any more, I can always ask my family at home to send me some. So yes, Plus I brought my homeopathy, which I use certain ones just to help with different things. I brought some of those with me. So these are the little things that you forget about sometimes when traveling. So make sure to bring those along with you. Another thing I found useful on the flight were these socks. I always bring these, they help with circulation and I put them on for the long haul flight. I didn't use them when I traveled from Newcastle to Dubai, which was eight hours, but for that 16 hour flight, yeah, I put these on just to make sure, you know, the circulation is going. Plus, I brought some slippers. These are great. They pack so easily. They just bend. But, you know, when you're flying such a long way, it's great just to take your shoes off and pop these on while you, so you can walk around on the flight, just feeling that bit comfortable. And make sure as well to pack a toothbrush and some toothpaste because... I remember when I used to fly, the airline used to provide like a little bag with all these little things in it, an eye mask and all these things. They're not there anymore. So if you need those, bring those with you. Bring a toothbrush and toothpaste because during that long stopover, it's good just to freshen up and just feel that. And wet wipes as well. I bring wet wipes, which are really useful, you know, just to clean the skin, just to freshen you up for that next part of the journey. So yes. That's my tips for now. I'm going to show you some footage from me leaving Newcastle Airport. So we'll start with that. Then you'll see me in Dubai, arriving in Dubai and then Dubai itself, the airport, then flying to New Zealand and a bit of footage when I get off at New Zealand at the other side. OK, so cue the footage and I'll see you at the end.
so that's my journey so far. Here I am in Auckland, New Zealand, ready for the next part. I will keep you updated with what's going on, whether I'm going to stay or whether I decide to go back to the UK. If I stay, I've got to go through that visa process, which is not an easy process. So I'll have my challenges and I will explain the details as I go through it on the way. And also some just some adventures that I'm having here in New Zealand. I'm going to show you different areas. One area I'm showing is St. Helia's here. So I'll give you some footage there and other places I visit here in New Zealand. So yeah, that's it from me. So I hope this has been of use to you and I'll be back again soon with more on this journey. Thanks for your time. Hope to see you again soon. Bye now.